meeting to order. Yes, everybody ready? Okay. Uh, here we are, Tuesday, December 20th, just after 3 o'clock. And uh, got Kevin from Beats Architects with us. Sidekick Shelby's not here today. Um, so, how do we want to start? Andy, you want to jump in and and bring us up to date with some thoughts we've been discussing? Sure. So, uh, just to let the community know that we were very fortunate enough last week to receive the Skills Capital Grant that we had applied for. Mr. Uh, Leon can assure you, submitted back in September. Uh, we did receive the full allotment of $5 million, uh, which is great. That means we have 3.5 million of that five that can be applied towards a particular project. Uh, so right now, as a quick summary, between the insurance settlement that we have on uh, the building itself, the insurance settlement on the lost equipment and tools, the allotment that we can apply to the facility from the first grant, the large grant that we just received last week, assuming that in we can talk more about this later this evening at the full board, but the economic bond bill that Senator Cummins put, put forward, along with monetary donations, that gets us up to just north of 5.8 million total. I think more realistically, we're gonna be in that 5.6 million, and I can share more details later. Um, that's on the high end, I think it would be 5.6 million. So with that said, uh, at one point I, I, I need to reinforce to the subcommittee is uh, specifically with these two grants and the three and a half million that we can use for this particular project, the clock starts. It officially starts probably uh, in about a week and a half. Uh, when the new year starts, the state will be sending out contracts to all the schools who, who receive this grant. And we have to spend this money uh, by June of 24. When does this grant run? 25. 25, okay. Um, <clears throat> is it June or June? I I'll have to look at it specifically. The point is the clock starts. So, uh, 2025, Joe. I'll get you that two and a half years. Uh, so the thought process is, uh, and I think I've been you've done only work in the last several months. Um, and I think we're, we're almost at the phase today. I think after today's meeting, we'll have a better understanding of moving forward, going out to bid, uh, and really officially starting that process. Um, but how do we keep ourselves within budget? Because, um, and to advocate for the school, we have 15 programs to try to support, we have academics to try to support, um, and for us to, to overextend too much, uh, in my personal opinion, doesn't make a, a lot of sense. Um, when at the end of the day, I think we're gonna have a, a new building for this program, uh, which I think is God sent, uh, along with state-of-the-art equipment coming into this program that we never would even fathom to have uh, prior to, to May of 2022. Uh, so I, I see this as a, a huge step in the right in, in the direction of, of the school, in the direction of the horticulture, it's a direction I never thought we would even see. Uh, so thank you to our fire. Here we are. Uh, so that's just my opening feelings. But. Congratulations to, to Joe and Melanie for getting this grant for us. Uh, we wouldn't be having this conversation if we didn't get that. So, thank you. Congratulations. Okay, so um, that brings us up to date. Um, essentially, um, one thing you did, um, Superintendent Andy didn't touch on is what we feel we can spend on the project. I mean, a, a few a few meetings ago, I, I think this committee said 4.9 was going to be our budget. I think low end of five million, I would be comfortable with. Um, that's using every single penny. My my concern is um, unforeseen costs. You know what happens during the construction process? Something pops up, um, and, and I just have to share you know, with. I don't think it's on you. Animal Science Building. I guess we could kind of sneak it in later into the meeting, but you know, we have other other issues on campus. We have the, the renovation of the former GCC building that we're working on, currently working on. Uh, we also have part of the expansion of Animal Science, uh, trying to include the companion animal concentration. There's um, 
renovation slash construction costs that would be with the current nursery barn. How do we turn that into the canine facility? Uh, we're meeting with a different architecture firm uh, on that particular project. Those costs might be higher than we had anticipated. Um, so there's a lot of moving pieces. Not to mention the animal control facility. I know Kevin, you're, you're involved in. Uh, I know that doesn't impact us directly. But there's a lot of work happening down back. Uh, and how do we make all of these pieces fit without overspending on horticulture that would neg neg negatively impact the other projects? How do we make it all work uh, while giving horticulture the building that they deserve? Uh, so that's the million dollar question, no pun intended. Uh, so how, how, do we, how do we make this work within the, you know, the, the low five million range? That, that's my question. <coughs> I think it's possible. But. Well, if I could just say, I, I really want to compliment Melanie and Joe, first of all, for getting the grants, all of them. Uh, the committee, the community that has reached out to us in, in spades in regards to giving us equipment and all that, the multipliers that have occurred since the bad fire happened, uh, we have to be so thankful for it. In the and an available member of maintenance. The uh, situation. Um, the other thing is, I think you guys realize that that the grandiose idea that we looked at in the beginning was shrinking to the fact of the real reality of real dollars. At the same point, I think as a chairman of the board and my fiduciary responsibility to the electorate. Uh, as regards to being able to explain everything that we're doing. <clears throat> I think that uh, what you had before and what you're going to have in the future is going to be fabulous. Is it going to be a Taj Mahal? No. But at the same time, I think it's going to do everything that you guys want and need on a, on a daily basis. Uh, so I, I just think that the trustees who have to vote for this uh, want to work within the parameters of the five million uh, in being able to do that job. Having said that, I know poor Kevin sits over here and said, I'll do my best, <laughs> but uh, you know, uh, the old story looks good on paper, but, but I think that reality is that uh, we, we all know that we're going to squeeze this thing a little bit. and still make it come up very nice for the students, uh, the workers, uh, the attendees. I mean, I've always said very long that the student is the end user, and that's what we're building as far as the end user. So having said that, I believe that, uh, that we need to have Rick oversee this as a property committee manager, but then to work with you and in Andy in regards to the dollar amount uh, to try and, and make it come out that way. I turn it back to you to see reality of what your thoughts are. Yeah, I mean, as you know, I've been kind of putting out, you know, numbers based on, you know, well, but before last week or the week before, I forget when it was, but, you know, we finally got a real kind of cost per square foot kind of shoot at. So, you know, we're still we're still kind of using those numbers <coughs> here, but you know, it's not a real number until the cost estimator looks at it, and, you know, dissects it, and, you know, puts a real cost to it. So, I mean, I'm I'm hoping that we're within or underneath that budget number that we've been talking about, but um, you know, the, we'll have to kind of wait and see. You know, there's new there's new codes and. You wouldn't have been able to avoid them even if we accelerated this project because the permit, you know, when the permit is pulled, kind of sets the sets the you know the starting point. Sure. Um, so there's a stretch code that's going to be coming into um, North uh, Northampton. Plus, there's also the um, the new uh, well, Northampton has uh, a requirement for net zero. So. Um, <coughs> Not exactly sure how that will impact the project, other than you know the, the 
building in, I don't know if this is a negotiation with somebody in the, in the city to like figure out how to, I guess, come up with the power that you're generating for this particular building to offset the power use of the building. Um, you know, that's, that's what the city is trying to get and all the new commercial buildings to. So this yeah, would this fall be, under the jurisdiction of a commercial building, being an academic, uh, a building on an academic property? Yes. I'm just throwing it out there. Um, it's, not, so, it's not residential. So yes, not, yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, like everybody's said, um, we applaud you for your efforts. Um, you've given us, provided us great information. Um, we understand that we pretty much burned through our budget with you, <laughs> which we uh, appreciate you going above and beyond the call of duty in reality. And uh, um, my guess is you probably spent more than the budget, um, but we're at the point where we have to deal with the stark reality of what we can afford due to the other projects we got on the horizon. Um, so essentially, um, I think, not, I don't think, um, that we need to start moving forward with um, working with the city and putting an RFP out for design services, and we'd certainly hope you would submit uh, or uh, respond to the RFP when the time comes. Um, and uh, the clock's going to start ticking soon, so we got to get are but moving in that regards to start spending the money so we can take advantage of these grants. Did I say that effectively? I think so. Okay. Um, anybody else got anything to add? Mr. Joe? Um, I mean, I, I, I agree with it. I, I think we're at a point where <clears throat> we, need to, we need to move forward. We need to get this out to the world with the money that we have. I Again, I, I echo Andy. I mean, we could sit here and, you know, some people have been talking to me seem sad that, you know, the idea of a seven and a half million building couldn't get done. But that really was never our goal. That was never really our horizon. Some of those things where you don't really know you might want it until it shows up in front of you. But I, I, I certainly think that 5.1, 5.2 with money left over for uh, unforeseen costs, like I, I hear you all saying, I'll echo it. I think that makes the most sense for the school. Um, and I think at the end of the day, with all the grants that we have, with a brand new building, with all the different new features and, and all the equipment, I, we really are going to be probably the premier horticulture program in the state when you look at facilities and, and uh, equipment. So I, I'd be, I think this is going to more than serve the students uh, at our school, that they're going to be able to get uh, one of the top educations in the state, if, if not close to, if not the top. Once this is built, to be honest, this is a, a great advantage for our students. Yeah, I have no idea what other facilities have in regards to uh, a horticultural program, so obviously going to defer to what the admin is telling us, and um, that's, uh, that sounds wonderful to me. Um, so it's time to uh, start moving forward, and. Um, I don't know if. Um, I like to hear from Kevin if you want to. Yeah, the presentation. that's where I was just I going. Yeah. yeah, so I don't know if I hit all of the, the uh, things that you suggested for uh, program reductions. I think I tried to take them all into consideration. So I have the I have the revised program you have kind of written here. So the first uh, the first one, which was the one that you guys received um, last week, uh, was at eleven thousand six hundred. I got it down two hundred more square feet just to have that option. Um, but as you'll see from the cost, which I probably you probably already did check out, uh, it's probably going to be more than you can spend. And I think that I think that what you're saying, you know, finding ways to create efficiencies and how we go about doing this. You know, even if you have to sacrifice the space for the initial period of time, 
to, to make it so that you do get the full building that you can kind of finish out later. So this is the other one. Uh, this is the second one based on the reductions. So it went from 11,400 down to 10,500. Yeah. So this is the this is kind of a modified version of the one that you saw. I get I took some space off of it here and crushed that down a little bit. Um, and this is still has a large classroom. In the in the um, program suggestions, were you saying that you wanted to try to limit it to two classrooms, or was three the goal? Three, three classrooms. Just one of them, one of them would be large. Uh, a large classroom, they call be 800 square feet. Right. So, you know, the site was was a challenge, and that's kind of creating the, the, the shape of the building here. You know, we have the, kind of the, this, uh, you know, rare species of tree down at the bottom of the hill that kind of limits our ability to build that way. And then we're trying to, like, fit the greenhouse in between the road and this uh, this road here, so you know we're trying to like pack all of this into like a, a specific area of space and not you know not infringe too much on this and trying to keep enough space in between the barn and the greenhouse to, to make it usable. And I think I think we can still you know make it a little bit better than what it shows right now, but this is a I think it's at a good place. Um, um, it's not a simple footprint for the building, but you know it, it works and it does help to kind of separate the mass for the retail area from the mass of the classroom. It kind of creates this natural separation between the two parts of the building. So this is the uh, this is the smaller version. So we made this classroom smaller. Um, I think we could probably you know if if that's what you want to do maybe make this a little bit smaller. I'm not sure how that, you know, impacts up here because we're trying to keep a, kind of a simple massing. And then we basically took all the walls out of the head house area and reduced it down to that 1,500 square feet that you suggested. And that's something that, you know, could be, you know, constructed over time. You know, we could try and leave it as much of a shell space as we can, but, you know, there may be, like, minimal work that you want to do in there. And you're going to have to put lighting in there and heating anyway. So, uh, you know, you'll save a little bit, but maybe not uh, a huge amount. So those are the, that's the, that, that particular option. And then, uh, let's see, this is the site plan for that. So you get a little bit more space around the building, which probably works a little bit better. And then, this is a, an idea of what the mass would be. We just do kind of a flat roof area, maybe doing something you know in this area just to express the entrance a little bit. You don't have to take this as like what we'll do in the end, but and then kind of a like a barn type of you know gable roof area in the back, just to get the, the roof up to a certain height and get that climbing space in there. Mm -hmm. So basically, that's uh, going back to the plan. That is just over this uh, shop area here. And you know you can see this kind of popping up above the, you know, the top of that barn, that barn roof. All of this area would all be just a one story flat roof. And I think that's what that's <coughs> would be, you know, the most cost effective uh, approach to building the building. And I think that, you know, if we can do something like this, you know, maybe do something interesting at the entrance, I think it'll be a, a nice looking building. So now we get the costs, and you know, they're still a little bit higher. So if we we'll kind of say that's a no-go there, you know, kind of focus on this one. That that low five million dollar that includes everything: design fees, um, construction costs, and everything. So you're still looking at a little bit more than what you're what you're talking about. And your uh, other costs, soft costs. Uh, you've got construction testing 10, 20, and for the option C. Or did that jump 10? Is that a goof? Uh, that is, that one should be probably 22. 
Just to, just to have a number on it. Yeah, yeah, understood. Yeah. I see Shelby's um, lack of, of uh, involvement today in <laughs> the site is, is, is made clear here. But, you know, and, and the OPM fees is a little bit of a kind of a guess as well. It may be lower, you know, depending on what you need out of the, the person. You know, if you're looking for somebody, you know, that's going to have to manage a project all the way through, you know, I know that you don't have staff to, you know, dedicate to a project like this. But, and is the, the state going to require of that to fit the size of the project? Yeah, right? once you go over a million and a half dollars, you need to hire an OPM to manage it. Yeah. And, you know, it's good they'll have eyes on the yeah. project all the way through. Yeah. Make sure whoever the designer ends up being hopefully feeds, but you know, does their does their job and gives you what you need without you know uh, making it too expensive by adding in things that aren't necessary. Something comes to my mind um, if we move forward with a complete new structure, we're going to demo. Um, Anybody have any idea, Tim, um, potential contaminated soils? Um, I don't know. I don't know when you get underneath the, the slab in the upper garage, if they, if they see anything there. If there's been no issues through the years where that no, you know about? Nobody said anything, though. <clears throat> that was the, the design you have up there for a whole new or renovating? This is all new. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I did ask the estimator about, you know, if we could, you know, because, of, you know, we're looking at pretty much a gut of that building, and he said if you keep the structure, you know, you could save probably like $20 a square foot, you know, in the overall cost of the building, but you'd also be, you know, compromised by the fact that you have this existing structure there that you will need to modify in many ways to make it so that it works for all the new uh, uh, mechanical equipment, energy codes, all that. So, and this does this does include keeping the greenhouse or taking it off and kind of putting it onto a new foundation, which saves a little bit. Anything that's viable, Tim? To do what? Dismantle. Yeah, uh, dismantle the greenhouse and move it. Yep. <clears throat> You're suggesting move the greenhouse because it's going to make it makes room for that back garage to be at better elevation throughout. Is that and less site work? Yes, um, I did have the, the existing building yeah. up here, so that'll allow us to tuck it over, and you'll get probably less site work because it'll be on more uh, even elevation. Yeah, I mean you can see it kind of it's, it's pretty close to yeah. like maybe 12 feet off from where the, that is and you know maybe it's possible that we can you know figure out a way to like you know it's just that you know there's a lot of, there's a lot of space in going the on there on yeah. this area and you know I s s imagine maybe if we pull this area back that may allow some but you know even even putting the building here we're going to be possibly touching the roots of that tree and uh, you know when you get that close you don't know what's what the what the damage is going to be. So. Which direction is north? So you put an arrow be that way, right? Yeah. Right. yeah. Can I ask James and Mark? Is there any benefit if you, if we, you know, I know we're not at that stage, but if we get to a point where we shift the building all the way, or or, or shift it up and put the greenhouse on the opposite side of the building, is there does that have an issue with sun? Sunrise, sunset. No, as long as the building's not shadowing it. Yeah. It's so if you yeah, if you were able to shift the building <coughs> into the existing footprint, almost where the greenhouse is, an empty space, and put the greenhouse and headhouse on the other side, that might be a possibility. When we actually get to bid, and design, which might protect the root system. <coughs> what is that? The tree, tree may shadow it. Huh? 
It's a, it's a Don Redwood. I mean, all <laughs> coworkers gonna curse me out, but you know, if the tree is really messing up, we have to put the building. We can plant another tree. Uh, I don't, I don't know. Uh, Telling me that now, James. <laughs> so there's no affinity to that tree in reality. No historical. Uh, well, there's a historical. No, it's just we absolutely love the tree. Yeah. And we okay. get to see that cut down, and it took yeah, so we, long for it to grow to that size. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Kevin, I heard got it. To cut that tree down. What's what's so the size of it, James? A couple feet. Yeah. Oh, it's a pretty good size. Yeah. Hundred plus year old tree, probably. Well, I don't know. It was planted when that complex was first made. So um, 50 years. Yeah. So it's been there a while. But it was fairly damp down there, so it's been growing quickly. Yeah, you can't really see it here. Yeah, it's right here. So it's, pretty, it's a big tree. Yeah. But I guess the reason I throw that out there, I don't know if this is going to fit in the process, is it's been on our minds, what do we do in order for us to proceed with this? Everything we're currently using is going to be gone. So how does the, how do we function? You know, can you build the building around what's still existing or some of it, so that we can continue to function as a program? Is that a major, you know, messing up of we're everything? We're going to have you living out of suitcases. We're going to get your spaces. We're going to have you up at the state land. We're going to have you in other areas. I don't think there's any way that they can build a building yeah. around it and still have you in that area. Yeah. I would agree with that off the top of my head. I don't know <laughs> all the particulars. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, if we start moving the building around on the site, you know, there may be another flat area, but this is like right at the main plane of the rest of the campus. And, you know, there, I know with the... Um, the animal care building, you know, that's that's kind of an issue where you have to, you're going to have to drive people down if they're uh, need wheelchair access to it because there's no ramp. So if we start moving it around the site, we'll have to start creating more, you know, accessibility uh, components on the site to, to make it work. So that's kind of why we chose this space, or it really was the easiest, had all the utilities right here already. and. Uh, I get that, you know, it does take away your ability to operate while the building's being constructed. Yeah, because I mean, that's probably going to affect two school years, I would assume. You know, whatever we do this year and all of next year. Yes. Yeah. What's the current here? gross area, Tim? Okay. Of what? A horticulture building before the fire. 8,000. It goes like 8,000. One of the biggest increases is going to be the third class. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And then the simulator space that's going to have, that's probably the biggest chunk of what we have to explain. Okay. Well, yeah. I, I don't know um, if you thought about my, uh, or one of my comments about the circulation space. You know, you kind of look at this and see it's pretty wide. I think it's like maybe 11 feet wide. Um, and then it kind of comes down to more of a six feet, which is a code minimum for school building. I mean, we could shrink this up. We just, you know, I, I've heard what you said in the past about, you know, getting kids in close proximity or bumping into each other. And, you know, the, the tighter you make those spaces, the, the more likely. Yeah, but that, that space is only accessed by about 24 to 30 students. At a time. Yeah. So I don't think the circulation would be an issue. Meaning in the narrower corridor? I don't think it'll be an issue. This yeah, one, this we're one, not this having one hundreds. Yeah, yeah, there's yeah, not there's hundreds of kids coming in and out of that space every day. You know, the first period or second period, you might have a turnover of 30, 40 kids. But beyond that, you're going to have the core 24 kids that are working in and out of that space that week. So Our biggest issue is circulation is at the front door. Because you guys now, yeah. Because right, right, we have lockers right there, so it's very crowded. Kids are at their lockers or trying to get by to get in the classroom, but now the lockers all in that hallway. Yeah, it should. It, it will 
greatly reduce the congestion that we currently have. Um, so yeah, we wouldn't need as much in the front. Right, the locker room, the lockers is not aligned, correct? Is that what's representing the lockers? Yes. Yeah, along here. Yep. You know, while it would look nice with a 11 foot wide entryway and stuff, we don't necessarily need that. But, you know, we'll, we'll figure that out as we move forward. I like the idea of the wider, wider entrance way. Um, What's the current size of your head house? Okay, I top my head, I don't know. 20 by 20? So 400 square feet? Yeah. And you wouldn't have the re retail space there. You would just have the classroom tables, the production tables and other stuff. Right now it seems crowded because you have the you have the retail <coughs> counters that wrap around the left hand what would be the lower left hand side here. Right. And you can only have you really only have one production table now, right? Well, there's two together. They're pushed one, together? Yeah. yeah. So it's one big one. You know, and with the wreath machines there, it's even smaller. And, yeah. Um, so having more room, you could have two things going on in there. Mm -hmm. But also with that 1500, if we're going to put a storage closet in there and we're going to put oh. like the retail counter, maybe by that other yeah. side door, you're going to start reducing it, but it'll still be plenty of room. Yeah, but I, I mean, even with the... Yeah, I think down the line you probably only need. Look at my office. My office is 280 square feet. Yeah. You know, and mine's it's a big office. I don't even need that much space. But there's no way that you need 570 for retail. Even with two coolers and a counter. Right. So I mean, there's a space that we can we can save. You know, and I think looking at the head house storage. The storage. We have to is talk about have to that increase from what we currently have because. We're, now we're using a section of the barn. Right. So we would have to have a place to store all the back stock of stuff that isn't currently being used right. to buy by the case. Right. So but if we're, we have another location. We met, that's what I think we're going to have to talk about is another location. I mean, putting a shed up in an available space near you guys for $12,000 is a lot if it can save us 500000 or whatever. I mean, we got to think about right. the dynamics there. But I, yeah, I understand your point. Yeah, it's so a storage space and a, and a store space the size of your, you had one, one and one, that's 500. And then what do we say our current space is? 400. So, yeah, I mean, that, so. I think it was bigger than that. I think it was more like 800. No, my classroom was about 600 and something. I think the head house is closer to that. <coughs> So if you look at the classroom, the front classroom, mm -hmm. and the head house are about the same, and I think the front classroom was 600 and something. Okay, that, that yeah, that's 25, 25, 30, 30, 30, so it's about, yeah, 600. Right, and I think that's, the head house is about the same, the same size, so 600. Yeah. So if you were to reduce the 1,500 by, say, 300 square feet to 1,200, we might... That would help, yeah. That would... Right, so the current head house is... What are we thinking? 600? 600. Six to 650, yeah, somewhere there. <coughs> Plus you'd be getting a classroom. 1,500. Could also be virgin, yeah. if needed. Somebody refresh my memory, please. What's the purpose of the head house? What's its function or its use? The head house, it, it's basically it's a workspace, lab space at the head of the greenhouse. So anything that we do, potting, floral design, wreath making, mm -hmm. all of that happens in that space. So currently in the in that space we have 12 plus kids making wreaths and trying to work. We're using every little open space for a kid to make something. So it's it's very tightly packed. So having more space would allow it because that to be easier. Yeah. Right now that 600 square feet is retail counter that wraps around like these tables. Uh, the coolers are in there plus the production in space. Right. Um, yeah. So it's definitely and how is that different yeah. from project space? Project space is going to be more like uh, whenever they're doing um, some walls design. and floors and landscape walls. designs. They need they need space within. So right now they try to rotate the 
equipment out of the garage and build spaces. This would allow them, if they're working on equipment, for the equipment to stay where it stay is. Stay where it is. And they could do the project space. Right. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. <coughs> so, but reducing, I would say, 12 to 13, yeah, 1,200. I wouldn't go any smaller for the head house. We're going to put a small storage on the retail space. Now, do. in the office, I see the two steps. One of the steps I code, or can we do one? Uh, yeah, it was supposed to be one. It was supposed to be storage. So storage. Okay. That is that three stalls in each of the bathrooms? Uh, one handicapped and three regular. And is that code? Mm -hmm. uh, yes, I didn't follow the code. So, I mean, there may be a way to get that down if we're just talking about actual occupants versus code occupants because the plumbing code kind of wants you to take the code version, which has more, more people in the building than what may actually be in there. So if we can work with the plumbing inspector to, uh, you know, maybe reduce that, that would make the bathroom. So it currently it's one stall and one stall. But if you were to increase it to two and two, that would be... Huge improvement for oh, us. Yeah. <laughs> I know it doesn't matter for the bid process, but you, you talked to me about you, the simulator space being between two classrooms, right? Right. So, yeah, we can just keep that in mind down the line. Well, I mean, yeah, you could almost shift it between the two classrooms. Right. Uh, I mean, where it is now isn't necessarily bad because if you had, I don't know if you'd put windows in the office space along that wall, but... Yeah, that way you could have two groups... Sense. If you, right, if you right. have windows <coughs> between classroom two and the simulator, that's awesome. But if it was in between classroom two and three, that'd even be better, because then you'd have windows on both sides. I don't know if you want windows on both sides. It takes up wall space. It takes up wall space, but then you have kids looking through to the two classrooms also. But it, it, you would have some sort of way for us to look into, keep an eye on them, at least right, one of like the classrooms. You see it at other schools where they have a language lab, foreign languages, they go right. into that space, they can see them, and they're on. Yeah. These are all details for the next yeah. round. Yeah. <clears throat> so, did we bring this to adjournment and thank you, Kevin, for his <clears throat> yeoman's task of uh, guiding us through this and uh, making us think and giving us good things to think about and ponder and <clears throat> excuse me. And decide how the heck we move forward. I think we we decided that we can't afford the larger version, and we need to work with our round numbers, five million dollar budget. Yeah, I concur. I appreciate it. Yeah. So, I mean, do you want to take one last round of? Maybe reductions. We'll get the lobby space a little bit narrower. Uh, we can reduce the headhouse space, but the more we reduce that, you know, without changing the shape of it, um, it pulls that greenhouse closer to the repair shop. Right. So it's. Uh, but you could, I, shift, you could shift this way. Slightly, right? Uh, yeah, could. Oh. It might change the shape of the hallway, but I mean, I'll, it's a possibility. Yeah. I appreciate, I yeah. personally, in my opinion, appreciate what you're offering, but uh, I think at this time um, we shouldn't be spending your time anymore. Right. I mean, no I no still, disrespect. I still owe you a little bit of narrative and to describe the building and then a cost estimate after, okay. after that. That's I just don't want to like, give you something that you have as a product that shows you over budget to what you want to spend. You know, so that I guess what is your comfort level in doing that? You know, because well, you're going to have to give something to the, the trustees, right? To take a look. Um, again, um, off the top of my head, in my opinion. Um, Essentially, new to this process in a sense, you know, being the contractor, I was bidding on these projects and not necessarily involved in the development of them. 
and and that the fact that we have to put this out for uh, our fee for design services, um, how, how much further do we go? Anybody else wish to jump in here? Um, Kevin just indicated he does owe us some more info, but in terms of showing us another design, do you think it's worthwhile to anybody? Once. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> what I'm suggesting is kind of do it on the fly. You make these small reductions, get the narrative sure. done, get the cost estimate done, and that's the final. That's the final package. Sounds good. And the final yeah. reductions would be narrowing of the hallway, reducing the head house somewhat. If I'm looking at this cost, then we have to come down about 500 square feet to try to come that's into that. that so is it, if, I, if, I, if I'm looking at the two different ones, I'm looking at the. 11, the 11,400 and the 10,500 and it's sort of the cost difference. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. I mean, just kind of keep in mind that, you know, as buildings become more compact, you know, mm -hmm. they still have to maintain certain pieces of equipment that don't necessarily this give you all the savings that you might, mm -hmm. might otherwise get. Yeah, sure. And so, uh, you know, good point. Uh, just when the, when the estimate comes back, and I mean, I'm, I'm hoping that we're kind of on track here. Tim, how, how big is the biggest, like Beth and Beth's classroom? Oh, but they're all like 750 over there. Is 800 too much? I don't even want to say that out loud, I'm just asking. Well, I look at the two we have, yep. or had. Mine was about 600. I think his was around 800. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I mean, and what do you want to have it done for? They're a also counter? smaller because they're, they have interior, interior storage. Interior storage. Within. Which we'll probably still need to have. Yeah. So it's going to reduce it down. It'll reduce the usable right. space. You, my guess is there's built in cabinetry and countertops. And the 600 that I have is <clears throat> barely big enough for 12 kids. Yeah. To do some of the work that we do, I can fit 15, 18 kids in there, but it's very tight. 800, we can fit, you know, I don't know, 18 to 20 kids. It's still squeezing three to a table, but you can fit more in there. And some of our classes are going to be that big or bigger. Right. I think, yeah. I mean, maintaining at least 800 square feet makes sense yeah. per classroom. That's what it sounds like. Um, so it's really the hallway, head house. Yeah, maybe you said bathrooms and other. One of the staff toilets on this iteration is, is a storage room yeah. and only one all gender staff toilet. Um, can you do that yeah. for, for the students? Right. Have sure. just one all gender? Okay. We still cap it at 12. So if you if you were to reduce yeah. it, currently I mean, all of our shops are basically single seat all gender room. bathrooms. Mm -hmm. Right. So mm -hmm. I don't know if there's savings there based on the plumbing code or the plumbing inspector. Those would have to be in addition to the main bathrooms for the building. Oh, because it's a standalone building. Yes. Okay. So those main bathrooms, we have to have three stalls. Oh, I'll take another look at it. Yeah, you know, if, we're, if we're reducing it down, you yeah. know, it, it's based on, um, I think you have to have 20, 20 students per one fixture. And so when you calculate out the classrooms, it's, um, what is it? Uh, yeah, we, we'd have to rethink that because, I mean, people aren't putting in male, female bathrooms in schools like this anymore. So. You know, we may have to talk about maybe that's configured differently to allow multiple all gender single use and how that looks with the plumbing code. But I mean, I understand as a standalone building, but that's just not what's happening right now on the ground level. You know, people are changing bathrooms into all gender. So if you do that, the only thing you can't have is a urinal. It just has to be a toilet. As soon as you put the urinal in, in a toilet, then it's 
then it's male only. Well, don't get, don't do away with the, the urinal. The boys are going to pee all over the seats. <laughs> yeah, that's an error. So you couldn't you couldn't have a urinal in in the regular. Well, we have them in the seat building. They're not. They can handle it. They're, right. they're over there every other week. Okay. How many? You know, if we're, if we're talking about like occupant numbers, like how many students do you see being in a classroom, like the 800 square foot classrooms, you know, because I'll, I'll base the toilet counts on actual well, for one to two, For one to two periods a day, you'll have, you know, uh, I'd say 15 to 20 per classroom. Per classroom. So up to 40. And for the other well, five, three for other six. periods, you're going to have maybe 12 in a class. Well, right. if the program expands to three, you have full-time teachers. You but not have. per classroom. No. He's at, he was asking per classroom. So most of the day would be 12 per classroom. Other. First period would be 15 to 20. Yeah. It could expand up to 15 in, in a grade level. Right, but all of those classrooms aren't being utilized at the same time, except for possibly like first period. We would, I mean, Half we, the time when, we walk, when you walk through the building, the classrooms aren't in use. Place. They're empty the majority of the time. Right. Well, you said the shops were not occupied the same time as the classrooms, correct? Correct. Right. So that's something to, you know, the it's just that you can't always say this is how it's going to be forever. Correct. You know, because you may, right. you know, come to but, a point But even then, our, yeah, but even then, the, the program's capped at 12 per grade. So every other week, right now the maximum is 24 students, except for some related classrooms that happen during first period or second. So for the remainder of the day, you have 24 students that are moving in and out of these different spaces and different ways that the instructors are bringing them through whatever curriculum or, or projects and experiences. Um, but I mean, if we have to have two bathrooms, we almost have to add a third bathroom into this drawing that doesn't exist to have an all-gender bathroom, which isn't accounted for. So if we, even if we, to your point, if we are able to come down to two stalls, mm -hmm. We may end up just repurposing that space for an all-gender bathroom in between, so we may not yeah. save anything there. And we have to put in an all-gender. I mean, nothing's required, but that's where what we're doing now. Yes, okay. <laughs> but right now there's no requirement. I, I didn't know if we had a boys' room and a girls' room with two stalls each. That would reduce two stalls out of the overall. Yeah. But I don't know how that would fit, how that would save us space in the layout anyways. We'd have to have a space in that building for non-gender specific bathroom. So it's almost like you're but we may be able to save the space to put that in yeah. without having to take away from Or like you said, can we just have like three all-gender bathrooms, yeah. three single bathrooms? Yeah, that wouldn't be enough fixtures. Even if, even just considering the, the actual, you know, number of students, I think. I thought you said it was 20 to one picture. I don't know if the plumbing inspector will look at it the same way that we're kind of conceptualizing okay, well, here. Well, yeah. <laughs> um, that would cover six. No, I, I, I think case. I will try yeah. and get it down to two, two, um, you know, stalls per bathroom, mm -hmm. and maybe we can get away with that. <clears throat> Um, it's going to depend on who it is because it's it's all opinion. I still think you're going to have to insert the all gender toilet sink. I mean, we're creating them wherever we can in, in different buildings, so that, that really needs to be there for so all. So you're students. not going to save any space there. No, not with that. I think we have to do it so all students can access the building and, and the amenities without any concern. I think the office space can be brought down a little bit. Yes. Even yeah, if that's, that's three, one yeah. place. Even I mean, if you had three people, that's still pretty pretty large. Yeah. But there's a there's a storage room missing out of the project space also. So, you know, I can shift oh, things okay. around a little bit. So it it does come out to the right square footage for the program, but it does need a little bit of tweaking. I think this is the closest we've been to, to getting everything that you guys really want plus what we can afford. Well, that's what the process is all about. You're getting there. So we'll take one last go at it. One last out the areas. 
kind of a narrative. Yep. Um, okay. Thank you for your time. Oh, thank you. We'll make sure Shelby's with you next week or next <laughs> visit, next meeting. Okay. Yeah. Because we, we need to obviously what, what start wrapping up here? and getting in our house. Yeah. At, at three o'clock again. Yeah. yeah, that's our schedule. Um, <coughs> three days later, though. Out here. What's that? You on vacation? I'm going on vacation. Yeah. Oh, okay. <coughs> Going anywhere fun? Got it all booked? Going to Kauai. Oh, yeah. Been there, done that. Yeah. <laughs> Looking forward to it. All right. We have a, we have a great deal. Somebody in our office had a vacation club with. Okay, so we continue discussion regarding the building options and plans. Uh, final meeting with Kevin and Dietz Architects will be our next meeting, which will allow us to uh, start moving forward with uh, maybe um, and how will the RFP process work? We'll have to work with procurement and get that out. Okay, so um, does it make sense for you to give uh, them a heads up that so we're moving in? Right, I spoke to Crystal yesterday about this. Um, she's ill, although she should be here today. But the thought is to perhaps. What is doing? Thanks. <laughs> Anyway, yeah. I thought she was trying to do that before. Yeah, yeah let's get it up. We, we may have to have a separate meeting with Joe Cook, but ideally we're going to have him at this particular meeting so he can be part of the conversation. But the 17th may be too late for that. But we'll get it. Okay. All right. Just uh, we, the, the uh, school entity uh, is stewards of a lot of property and buildings um, so I'd just like to keep that on our radar and and keep everybody aware of what's going on out there uh, any updates on the forestry property slash building up at the off of route 9 any thing more in terms of uh, costs getting utilities up no. there um, usage yeah I think Mark and James can you update on usage well, right now we've been shifting a lot of stuff that we're not using up there. So we have space to continue doing our projects through the year here. Um, and we're getting ready to base out of it, not work in it, but base out of for doing work at the, up at the woodlot itself this winter, um, once we're done on campus here. So in January, Fe January, February, I think he's going to plan on doing work at the woodlot itself. Our stuff will be, you know, securely stored up there, but the kids will be able to take the stuff out and use it, or put it back, um, as well as store all the stuff that not, we're not needing. So, like all of our landscape equipment and stuff, a lot of it is up there right now. Um, Winterized, put away. Okay. Um, so, Tim, uh, you shook your head about um, any uh, estimates on getting utilities up there. Where's where's that? He's, he's still working here doing site work, so these guys haven't been up there. Who's that? Uh, Huntley, Mike Schaefer. Okay. Um, what about some maybe uh, in-house grading the road some more? That's been somewhat of a discussion. That's something maybe you're going to be doing when you get up on Pretty site. Pretty filling and grading it? Well, not until spring. spring. Right. Or just dropping the light and... At spring at the earliest if we're ready to do that. We're finishing up grading project here, here um, and then we'll see where we're at in springtime if we have start doing that. But we're also doing 
we'll be hopefully this winter cutting down and removing all the overgrown trees and then in springtime we'll be ripping out all the stumps and making the area for heavy equipment to be used up there uh, okay so whether it's this spring or the following year but being that we won't have a bit space here really to do stuff at, uh, in, in another year uh, most likely we'll be spending more time up there so Okay. It'll be easier to get that done, and we'll have all the new equipment. Hopefully, have all the new equipment. Well, yep. That'll make it easier and have more kids working. Make the project go faster. Okay. So. So we have a, essentially a swing space for this process. Sort of. Sort of. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we have to. We're gonna have to figure out the road space because we're gonna have to get regular. Um, Vehicles. Vehicles, but we're gonna have to get. Uh, like Porta John's up there and out of there and trade it out, and so we'll have to coordinate all that to make sure they have what they need up there. All right, uh, Bird's Pit Road property. Um, see a lot of uh, white mushrooms. Yep. Um, is that all used for Feed our food. operations? Yep, and sell any surplus. You do, you're able to sell surplus? Yep. And the uh, the roof repairs of the uh, they, they framed up one end of the barn that had collapsed probably 40 years ago and put new siding on it and they probably stripped half the roof on one side and put new layment down they, there was never any plywood up so they're putting some plywood down okay great uh, where are we at with the paddock apple storage floor repair project uh, the new bids came in opened them and so there's enough money to do the the structural repair um, if we want to do the roof, we would have to come up with extra money. But the big thing is just to get it structurally repaired so we can go back in there. And we could, we could do everything else later. Um, okay. The guy um, quoted us $100,000 to put a metal roof on that building, which seems like a pretty small building for $100,000. Um, okay, I was unaware of any issues with the roof. This. I was just we were gonna we we're gonna fix that we we're gonna fix the roof all the water issues how it drains and where it goes to that that's what caused the problem okay so all right so we we have new bids so we're in the process of the city whatever is in the process of awarding awarding um, that project we I want to talk to Crystal about it but she she'll be back she'll okay be back, so. And how, how does that work, Tim? It all goes through procurement slash the city, correct? Well, once we pick it and, and Joe gives us his uh, approval, then we can just uh, give it to the company that, that bid on that. Who's the contract with? Is the contract with Smith Vocational or with the city of Northampton? Well, <coughs> technically with us, but it goes through the city. Okay. Uh, all right, drainage issue with Locust Street Pasture. I did attend that. Um, Conservation Committee. Uh, yes, yes. Um, the DPW gave a great presentation. Um, they obviously, uh, not obviously, but um, there were some questions regarding this. Um, they, they referred to it, the structure that's going to be used to dissipate the water into the field is a still basin um, and I had not heard that term it's not as big as a a retention basin or a, a detention basin it's smaller it's like a big cereal bowl with with a large uh, riprap in it so the water will come into it overflow <coughs> out into the fields obviously uh, voiced our concerns about uh, the grit more erosion of, of the brook bank and whatnot and making sure we get um, a monitoring system in place and uh, just projects I don't know what the DPW's timeline is but it's going to start moving forward it's you know reality of the fact it needs to get done and um, it seems fairly well thought out and um, there were some questions back and forth and uh, they essentially signed off on it. So that's going to go. Um, animal Science Building. Um, this is. The former GCC building. Yes. <clears throat> what, 
it's not on our list here, just thought of um, um, it's the animal control building. Okay, uh, where are we at with the animal science building? Um, rough framing has been put up. Uh, the kids are doing some electrical work. Uh, so it's, it's, that's going a little bit slower because there's only a couple of kids left on campus. Everyone else is out. So, but out the, on co-op? Yeah. So that's sure. a good thing. Yeah. Okay, so things are moving forward. We got a projected uh, timeline or when you hope to? I don't. I couldn't guess on that one. All right. Uh, window project. I saw some email regarding that starting at Christmas break. And which building? We're going to start an A building across the front and around the side and stop at this A133. That's what they're, the amount of windows they want to get done. They're going to be here on the 22nd and start prepping the windows. And that's R&R &R windows? Yep. A, C, and C building? Uh, I'm going to go over the plans with the engineer because the electrical contractor gave his final uh, plans and we hope to have that out to advertising by after, after the holidays so we can have the project done next summer. And the lead design on that is Towsley Associates? Yeah. Sidewalk project. Um, Mike, I'm supposed to meet with Mike Schaefer probably not not till next week, maybe after next week because he should be done. They're still doing some uh, elevation work for the work down in the farm area, but should be able to sit down and, and go over it with the, um, everybody in uh, Nelson about his patio, <coughs> see how that's going to work, what that's going to look like. And, uh, and that would be done for next summer. Mike Schaefer's with Huntley? Yep, he owns Huntley. Okay. Um, so you anticipate that project uh, summer of 2023? This, yeah. This coming year? Yeah. This coming summer? And that would include the patio for... Right. So we're going to... Since, you know, I asked for... Uh, I forget how much I asked for originally, but I know everything's gone up, so we'll just... The same thing with that storage building. We'll break it down. We'll do a building as the main object, uh, main bid, B building will be alter, uh, alternate one, and we'll just break it up that way. Okay, any movement on the chip activated entry doors? I don't believe so. Okay. When you say, um, Joe, you haven't heard an update yet, um, is this is this moving forward and in some way, or is it in the back burner because we got so much going on? Um, no, it's moving. It's moving forward on um, Josh Shears, and I just haven't heard heard an update yet. And on that. Josh. And Josh Shears, the technology, so he's going okay. to the tech side of it. Yeah. And then at some point, it's going to have to get uh, agreed upon on a plan. Um, for which doors and what, and then it will shift over to Tim Flynn. <laughs> <Tim's like laughs> Everything shifts so hard. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's got big shoulders. The only thing is like that big entry foyer, they so wide. All right. Uh, capital uh, FY24 capital improvement projects. Um, we so we bring me up to date. I'm I'm drawing a blank on this one. Yeah. So Tim, Crystal, and I met with the city capital improvement. Committee, uh, Tim did a great job. You want to share what projects we put forward? Who's uh, the East? To go forward. So my, um, there was only two original we had, and that was that was an issue for him because we wanted we had them both uh, as has to be done. Wasn't the to complete the AC? Well, so the AC project is going to be broken up into three years, right. so it's all capital improvements. It's 150,000 is their limit. So we asked for one more year of that. Um, oh, but the hood system. Yeah, oh, yeah, I was just going to say, where's the hoods? Yes. Yeah, and that was the hood system for the kitchen and to finish up the one in the yeah. uh, culinary. 
and <clears throat> is this something they're going to fund or we don't know yet? You won't know till March. So, but they did get back to us, and they and we had put them as critical, get them done next year. Um, and they wanted something out further. What else is there going on? So I, I put all the all the sh storage buildings in the multi-species barns. We want to reside them with metal siding and, and do new roofs on them. And the appropriation <clears throat> is 150. That's, that's the most you can yeah. get. Yeah. Okay, and. <clears throat> Per project, right? It's per project, right? Per well, year, it's per twofold. Year. It's, they can fund up to one hundred fifty thousand for a capital improvement, and it will not count towards net school spending. So one project over one hundred fifty is not good. But if we have two eighty thousand dollar projects, that's still a ten thousand. I believe would go towards net school spending. Mm -hmm. So. The, the 150 is the threshold limit that ties into the med school spending. Um, so, in this package, the kitchen hoods, there were two or one? We asked for two because one of them is being replaced in culinary through the grant. Yeah. Through, so, they had right their now. baking one, wasn't going to get touched. We want to upgrade everything so it's in the same uh, year, model year so everything's updated. And the ones in the regular cafeteria kitchen. Okay, and now uh, what's starting to come to light or on our radar is uh, the, the farm fields, Hospital Hill property, where people walk their dogs, people run. Um, tonight we're having a participation from the public. Um, some woman that lives out on Birch Pit Road has approached us. Approached Julie first, and then uh, approached me. Um, so we're going to start the discussion phase of what do we do up there, um, and that's what it is: discussion phase and information seeking, and um, see where we go. Um, one thing that, and I know Deb doesn't like this, but um, where's the city stand on the? in terms of it not being on the agenda, but I also saw somewhere in somebody's agenda, um, oh, it was the Conservation Commission. They had a disclaimer that any items that might not have been thought of. So, yeah, that's on there. Oh, it is? It's okay. tiny, but it's <laughs> there. Okay, so I can bring up something that may not be here? Um, Where's the, the status of the animal control building that the city's proposing to build? Does anybody know anything? Uh, they're still trying to figure out how to build the $750,000 they got with the 2,000 square foot building. They, they can't match that up. Kind, kind of what we're doing. Yeah. So. The last time I had a conversation with the mayor, which was at the Smith College breakfast, uh, she told me that, that they didn't have the right amount of money to do the architectural drawing, never mind build the build. Everything's on hold. Well, they have a, a drawing that Roy Brown did, probably in 2016. Yeah, it's dated. It's 2,000 square feet, but and they tried to, the, the police chiefs ground it down to 1,500 square feet, but then it almost leaves no room to, to work in there. You know, you get your, your cages and, and a couple of spots, but. Um, they just need more money. They need about four or five hundred thousand more. All right. There was something else I thought of, but now I can't remember. Um, anybody else wish to add their two cents worth? Bring up any other issues? Well, there is the other building, right? The uh, animal companion building, the pig barn renovation, because we're starting to talk about that. Thank you, Tim. And Andy happens to <coughs> have a concept. <laughs> it's not my concept, but um, Very well. <laughs> okay. It's another architecture firm that um, we've contracted with Tarowski. 
Kowalski two architecture. I'm assuming the two is it's a husband and wife team. Um, the concept is using that the same footprint as the current nursery barn slash pig barn. Uh, if we use that same square footage, what can we do to house the dog bathing, grooming, kenneling, and sort of a reception, retail, classroom space area? Um, so we met a couple weeks ago, I think, with them. Uh, they came up with some, some questions. Um, at, at this point, I think the, the same theme is we want this very cheaply and done yesterday. And um, the challenge is going to be how do we make it work within our, our budget. Um, so the budget, as a reminder, the last skills capital grant that we received, uh, we were able to earmark 600000 dollars of that particular grant towards facility upgrades. Um, prior to the fire, I was going to be prepared to stand in front of the board and justify, not justify, but advocate for tuition revolving money up, upwards of $600,000 for this particular project. Now that we have the grant, we can have the $600,000 for this particular project come out of the grant, which then hopefully allows us to use upwards of $600,000 towards a horticulture building. So. It's a shell game. We've talked okay. about this, um, but the problem is that six hundred thousand dollars that we were hoping to complete the dog grooming, kenneling, bathing facility probably won't touch the cost of that project. That's what I'm hearing. That. Am I speaking clearly? To yeah. <laughs> um, so we don't have a dollar figure. Simply looking at that same five hundred and fifty dollars square foot that we hear from Kevin over the last several. Uh, 600000 more budget, you're probably looking at closer to a million dollars. Um, I think that building is such a small building, we could be more creative how we put that up. You know, we hire a, a, a carpenter and we throw our our crew at it, you know, some farm crew and uh, maintenance that frame it up quick and then the um, plumbing can do their thing, electric can do theirs, um, bring the cost way down. I think that that's reasonable. Okay. All right, we cover everything that everybody can think of. So then that triggers the new horse stalls we want to put in the barn, in the MS barn, which triggers renovating the MS barn classroom into the pocket animal lab. I think the pocket well, animal is first before equine. equine right, is right, but I mean everything's, yeah, so definitely. And then that, that means relocating the, the pig pen, the farrowing pen down to the dairy barn. Right, the pig, we were talking about the pigs and the goats, correct? Moving them. But then I think originally we talked about horse stalls in the dairy barn, but also on the table, at some point we're going to have to do some sort of fundraising uh, for a lot of, to upgrade that farm. Because I think the next thing is the potential of, uh, it, unless we build a barn either attached to or freestanding uh, at the MS barn, that would be able to allow us to expand our equine. Uh, curriculum and concentration so it's it's whether we do it down there and to build up or whether we do so I think that, that we'll have to figure out but yeah they'll be to continue to build up the rest of the agriculture program to really come up to the level that the horticulture will be at uh, yeah we're gonna have to do fundraising we're gonna need more more funds to really give the students a top-notch experience and I think it's important to note with the GCC <coughs> building, the um, grooming area, and then the MS classroom, that's all within the grant, which we have about a year and a half left mm -hmm. to use that money. And I think it's, it's also important that when we renovate the, that the GCC to become the new animal science building, you know, animal science is going to go from, with, and along with this building, they're going to go from two classrooms to three. The horticultural building will bring them from two classrooms to three. So we're, we're going to be increasing the amount of classroom space that we have for the students. And, and yes, the, the goal of the three to five year plan is to begin to increase the students that can go into our agricultural program. Which is how we increase the enrollment. And, and I, I remember from a tech guy's thing. Roberts. Roberts. Barry Roberts. Yeah, Barry Roberts. But Barry Roberts spoke to me and said that when we're ready to, we'll get so much on our plate right now, I put them on hold, but he said when we're ready to go with the equestrian fundraising or whatever he wants, he wants to be on that committee and he's got 
grandiose ideas in regards to financial situation. So we definitely want them on that counseling uh, for that. So just keep that in mind. Yeah, yeah he's a savvy developer, without a doubt. If you have nothing else to do, if you drive around the state, go to Essex Tech and just drive by. And look down to the right and look at their ag complex. You can go to Bristol Aggie, and that's, so that's North Shore. If you're heading to like Hampton Beach, stop by Essex Tech. If you're going down to the Cape, stop down at Bristol Aggie right, and look at their ag good. complex. So, um, and, and you'll see where we are, where they are. Um, and this horticulture building is going to get us in that right direction. But as Joe was saying, uh, for us to truly be that Western Mass Ag School and have that same curve appeal, even though it's a back curve, and that is our flagship program. I stand by that. We need to upgrade this, this particular program. Um, and that's where that capital campaign is. So, so you mentioned Essex Tax. My it's in Danvers. Two sisters go to Crane's Beach regularly through the summer. And they, when they, she lives in, one of them lives in Chelmsford. And when they drive the back way, I guess they go by. I'm guessing that's this school because my sister said, Rick, if you saw that building, you'd be blown away. Oh, yeah. It's, it's the same. It's that, it's that grandiose, it's beautiful, mm -hmm. and it's fairly new, I take it. Yeah, 24 years, years old, maybe. Eight years. Okay. I think they reestablished in, tw yeah, 2014 they reestablished. And this was two districts that came together, and what were they again? Essex Aggie and North Shore Voltec, I believe it was. Regional location. Okay. They, they and us are the only two that have a true Aggie and the traditional boat tuck. When you look at Bristol Aggie, that's down South Shore, mm -hmm. and Norfolk Aggie, those are two Aggies, but only Aggies. They, they offer all the Ag programs, but they don't offer the plumbing, and electrical, and cosmetology, mm -hmm. and everything else. But Essex Tech is our, probably our closest sister. Okay. I'll say it again. Anything else? <laughs> Wrap it up. All right. Thank you, everybody, for your time.